His recent comments, Zelensky's on the counteroffensive, said his message to Russia is that Ukraine will not attack Russian territory in any counteroffensive. Why do you think it was important that he say this now as he visits with other world leaders? Well, some Western countries which have been providing substantial aid to Ukraine have expressed concern that he might use their weapons to attack Russian territory. So he was telling them not to worry about it. All I care about is re-liberating all Ukrainian territory that has been seized by Moscow. So I guess the question being, and these are his words again, constitutionally defined legitimate borders, which are recognized internationally. So to be clear, Russian territory could mean a few things. Does it mean Crimea? Does it mean some other cities that Russia has annexed in the last year? Um, Russia claims Crimea as its own, but it's recognized by almost no one internationally. And in fact, it's a bogus claim. So Zelensky is talking about all the territory of Ukraine that was established when Ukraine became independent uh, 30 years ago, and that was in, you know, under control of Ukraine before Moscow began its aggressive war in 2014. That includes Crimea, includes the so-called Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republic in Donbass. Okay, so in saying that and understanding what could be part of this counteroffensive, what do we think it will look like, and are you getting the indication that it may be happening soon? Um, it will certainly happen sometime in the next two months. When exactly, I don't know. Where exactly, I don't know. Uh, Ukraine will strike where they believe Moscow's defenses in the occupied Ukraine are the weakest. Uh, Ukraine could achieve a stunning victory if it were able to cut the land bridge from Russia through occupied Ukraine in the east to Crimea. But that probably requires more equipment than we, have, we the West, have provided. Uh, so, they, again, they will strike where Russia is weakest. The other place that is of great concern is the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia. The U.N. Security Council indicating that a deal may be in the works between the two countries um, to protect that plant and to determine ultimately who's in charge of it. How significant is this? How closely are you watching that element? Um, we are paying, I'm paying close attention. Uh, I don't know if a deal will be reached. Certainly, at the moment, it seems more likely than it has before. I suspect that's because Moscow is worried about Ukraine's counteroffensive and recognized that, in fact, if Ukraine were to strike in that area, there's a good chance they'd be able to regain, regain that territory, liberate that territory. So Moscow may be making a deal now or willing to make a deal now in light of, again, that potential d defeat. China, as you know, Ambassador, has been very careful not to choose sides, essentially, between Russia and Ukraine. A Chinese envoy is set to travel to the capital city of Ukraine in Kyiv in the coming days to promote peace talks. How skeptical are you of China's intentions here? Well, my view of the Chinese position is a bit different than yours. I think they very clearly back Moscow. That's why she visited Putin uh, a few weeks back. That's why... Ukraine, excuse me, China has refused to call Moscow's policy clearly aggression. Uh, but at the same time, Beijing is concerned that about Western sanctions, if they were in fact to send weapons to Moscow. And they're trying to tell, pose as a neutral party. But uh, I think the supposed visit of the Ukrainian, excuse me, the Chinese envoy on peace will be part of this game. But until she joins the West in saying Putin must withdraw from the territory he has taken by aggression in Ukraine. He's clearly backing the Russians. Right. So trust is an issue here. And it also might be an issue with my final question. Um, the head of the Wagner Group had offered to give Ukraine the locations of Russian troops in exchange for backing off from fighting in Bakhmut. Is this a trap? Ukraine didn't fall for it, by the way. Uh, Wagner. Uh, led by Prigozhin, wanted to take Bakhmut as proof that they were the most effective fighting force in Russia. But they've failed. Ukraine has not only maintained control in the area, not all of it, but part of it, they're now taking back territory that the Russians seized at great, great cost in blood and equipment. 
So if Wagner, if Prigozhin actually made that deal with the, offered that deal to the Ukrainians, which as you're right, they've refused, uh, he was signaling his own weakness. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.